Hello, Identity 5 Gamers. Today, we are going to be watching some more IVL. We're going to be watching Day 1, Set 2. And I imagine there's quite a few of you out there that are not super happy that we've mainly just been doing, like, tournament-based uh, content recently. And I apologize for that. Again, I am still working on, um, you know, my big project. Also, I just got Barmaid's accessory. That's pretty cool. Um, yay, look at that. Seawater in a bottle. That's definitely edible, drinkable, yeah. Anyways, I know a few of you are probably burned out from the tournament content, but don't worry, we are going to be playing Female Dance Lotus Day since it is her birthday. Um, that's quite the amount of inspirations I have there. Um, but, you know, I, I also just have to finish my uh, project before I can get, uh, you know, doing some of the other gameplay. I really do want to uh, keep investing into, like, doing some Hunter Rank stuff recently, because I've been learning a lot about Hunter Rank. Um, I've, been giving, I've been getting a lot of advice from people, um, especially Santi Devil. He's been helping out a lot. Um, looks like I'm not really getting anything super interesting here from the essences. But yeah, for all you people who want to see regular gameplay and not just tournament videos, I ask that you just hold on for a little while longer, because uh, I just need a little bit more time to get my projects done here. Now before we begin, we did actually get a gift here um, from Vamp Thing. They say, I want to see some more pro anti gameplay. Well, my antiquarian is definitely not the uh, one to watch, but they are gifting me the uh, accessory uh, for antiquarian, the Zeta accessory, which is really cool because it actually will match with my uh, Nightwatch one, which I believe I was also gifted. So yeah, huge thanks to Vamp Thing. I'll be sure to rock this very soon, uh, probably when I do ranks with uh, Hikado and the others. So thank you so much to Vamp Thing. I'll be sure to rock this accessory for quite a while. Let's send our thank you letter here and accept the gift. Can't wait to cook with this lightning freaking jewel thing, whatever it even is. <laughs> here we are, we're getting right into the matches. It looks like they've actually uh, changed up some of the UI, it looks like. Or maybe that's just for the team colors. I think it's just team colors. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see uh, Wolves versus YS here. And it's going to be Seer, Wilding, Puppeteer, and Mike Gaming going up against the Opera Singer to start things off with. So yeah, it looks like CN does not want to be... Yo, Matthias, get up, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, it doesn't look like uh, CN wants to play Ivy for round one so far. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder if they don't see Ivy as uh, as powerful as Opera. I mean, I, I do personally think that Opera is still better than Ivy, but I don't know how many teams have figured her out, especially in CN just yet. All right, now as for the builds, we're going to see what the confined detention warp on the opera singer. It's going to be bar time detention on Wilding, bar time knee jerk on Matthias, who looks depressed as ever he does not want to be here full kite build on the seer and then bar time knee jerk on uh acrobat as well but yeah running of warp on the opera singer i wonder how this is gonna work um because here's the thing she doesn't need blink right but it helps to get the uh the down um if the kite or if the chase goes well for her at that point she can use warp and chase she can use warp to pressure cyphers it really is up to uh Whatever the hunter chooses. That, that's what I like about warp. Is I don't know if I, I, I've been hearing like a lot of uh, um, different opinions about warp. It feels pretty adaptable. Um, you know, it's, it's a pretty new trait, so not everybody has figured it out to its full potential just yet. Um, but it, it feels like it's a very adaptable trait, right? Because you can use it in chase. It's not very good in chase, but I think the best time to use it in chase seems to be. Um, when the survivors vault like something crazy or they take like a huge interactable such as the tram or the coaster on moonlit or if they vault like a crazy big window it looks like she's gonna use the owl right then in there watsanuki rocking the extra sick holic cross service can you love to see it um but yeah I'll, either that or if they want to keep it basic and simple um warp has been used to catch up to the survivor after they have um initially dashed it's gonna drop the warp right there i actually disagree with that warp um yeah i think that that's a bad warp that's that's a bad warp. I disagree with that warp. I disagree with that warp. I think that was a bad warp. Um, yeah, I, I I disagree with that. Oh wait! Oh, she wasted her cape, and he just goes down anyway. Okay, I still think that was a bad warp. I mean, the the kite was a little bit long. The, those survivors, or sorry, the, the, those ciphers are slightly above average, but that's also because of the owl. That's also because of the owl. So that 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 checks out. Um. I wonder if he'll be able to farm up a second owl. I know you can't farm up owls during tide turn. Wilding is coming in to save. Uh, Wilding looks like he's the most used rescuer at the moment when it comes to fighting Opera Singer. And even Ivy to an extent. But I, I don't feel like uh, Wilding is crazy good against uh, Ivy if she can cancel his boar animation. Which I haven't seen too many of them do. I've only seen that happen a single time. Um, now let's see. Will Wilding actually be able to get this before half? I don't think he does. I think that's an after half rescue. Yeah, it definitely is. 
Uh, I mean, he's buying plenty of time for the Cyphers. Uh, and I guess they only have one Titaner on the team, so it just checks out. Look at him just... <laughs> oh, you just have to respect it, bro. You just have to respect Wildling. Oh my gosh. Re re oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. He, he kind of got hit a little bit early in his boar. This might be a double down here, actually. Ah, uh, no, they're running in two different directions. Okay, well, that's a dead seer. That is a dead seer. Um, warp will come back soon. I, I just, I don't know if I agree with that warp. Because, again, like I was saying, warp is usually better to catch survivors uh, when they're transitioning, right? Because usually when you get hit, um, that's the best time to transition to a better area. But with warp, it becomes kind of tricky because it's like, oh... By the time I get this distance, warp lets me catch up. So, unless the survivor has some like vaulting, has a vault that they can take. Uh, Matthias, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> he really wants to take kite. Um, and she sees him. She sees Matthias. Will you chase this puppeteer? I don't think it's good to chase the puppeteer. He's not on the cipher. I don't think you get you don't you don't gain anything by chasing the puppeteer here. Don't chase the puppeteer. Don't chase him. And you're gonna chase the puppeteer. Okay. I don't feel like you gain anything by chasing puppeteer. I don't know. Maybe make it. Okay. I feel like you want to warp onto a cipher right now. Um. Yeah. Warp onto the wildling cipher. Uh. No. We're still gonna chase Matthias. I guess that's fine. Okay. Now she'll. I guess she's wanted to use up all the Lewises. Oh wait. I guess he can't heal. Yeah. Cause he would need the acrobat. Are we gonna see warp here? Or are we just gonna dash? I think we're just gonna dash. Hmm, wants to save her warp. Probably wants to check the Cypher progress real quick here. We could see the Wildling use um, Masking Tonight. No, he just hops on Boar immediately. He doesn't even want to mask tonight. He knows the Opera Sing will find him out. Might as well just use the Boar while we have it. I believe um, this is his second. Is this his... Oh, that was Terror Shock. Never mind. I was about to say, I think that was like 30 seconds of Boar. Oh my gosh, he just goes down. That was a Terror Shock? Dude, he was already through the window. That's crazy. Okay, well, Wolves is doing this... They're playing this really well, but... I feel like the Cypher is ever so slightly behind. Um, this might be a 3k. Oh, no, she knows. Oh, she knows where the Acrobat is. Yo, how does she know? That's so smart. Okay, now, what? Most generous opera singer hitbox I've ever seen. He did not get hit by that. How is it that she can swing at people point blank, but when they're like 10 years away from them? It, it, it just, it, it hits. Like that doesn't make any sense. Uh, Wildling doesn't have Boar yet. Oh, good mind game. Good mind game around this pallet. See, so why didn't that hit, though? So why didn't that hit, though? Oh, he slow vaulted into her. Okay, big rip. But that rescue was before half. Um, so yeah, I, I think the Acrobat just kind of rushes in right now. He's gonna instant rescue here. Oh, careful now, careful. Are we gonna see, like, a slow bomb hit? Oh, he just bombs in for no reason. Terror shock. Get the rescue. Okay, hop on Boar. Immediately gets off of Boar, and then he's dead. Oh, not quite, though, not quite. Wait, locker's broken, locker's broken. And she opts to leave the Wildling. Yeah, she opts to leave the Wildling. Okay, it's still probably a draw. I thought it wouldn't be a draw. Warp hasn't been that great, honestly. Oh, here we go. That that warp kind of sucked. That warp doesn't do anything for you. There's, there's too many pallets. I don't understand. No, I don't get it. That warp is useless. What's the point of that? Okay, well, I mean, you get the... You're going to get the down anyway. That warp didn't do anything. Those warps are not very good. That's the thing. Warp and chase is really hard to use. Because, like, so many times when I've used it, the survivors always have something to work with. Whether that be an ability to gain distance, or a window, or a pallet. It's like, I warp on them, and then it's just like, unless they're out in the open, they're, they're, that, that warp's not doing anything. Like, even when I warp onto Cyphers, like, that's what I think. I just think warp is, like, kind of inconsistent. I mean, maybe I just need more practice with it, but I feel like it's a pretty inconsistent trait. Um, both pressuring Cyphers and... Uh, pursuing with it. I, I feel like it'd be nicer if the cooldown was maybe like ever so slightly shorter. Like, since it doesn't cover as much ground, maybe make the cooldown 90 seconds? I don't know, maybe that's a bit more generous. Because teleport and warp are the same cooldown, but teleport takes you farther, but it's not, uh, it's committal. Whereas warp isn't committal. You just go back and then forth, so I, I just don't know. War warp is definitely interesting. I I'm curious to see how uh, warp will be used in the future of these tournaments, because I definitely need more practice with it. And I'm curious to see how these top players are going to use it in the future. Moving on to round one, second half, we're going to see Officer, Magician, Acrobat, and Perfumer. So this is a team that's very much ready for the Opera Singer. And Ivy too, I would say. Um, Perfumer, I feel like, is okay against Ivy. 
and then Mage is pretty good against Ivy as well as First Officer. So this is this is ready for both Opera and Ivy, but it is going to be Opera once again. Um, we're seeing Antiquarian Puppet, Seer, and Merc bands uh, from the Opera Singer. This is indeed Cho Ai, so maybe we'll get to see Cho Ai's clown come out later in the set. That would be very fun. Uh, Cho Ai, a very, very good hunter. Wolves, a very good team. Um, I do feel like the Wolves will probably take this set, but we'll just have to see. I like that we're actually zooming in on the uh, spawns here, because I didn't really do that with Koa. We're going to see Mage spawn in a uh, Factory Dungeon, Officer Mid, um, Perfumer at the Shack, and then Acrobat in between um, Factory and Locker while uh, um, the Opera Singer is spawning at the old Locker area. Let's get the handshake going and see what kind of builds we have on these uh, characters here. It's going to be Confined Attention Blink. So no warp this time, but Confined is back once again. Uh, no TP though. No TP on the Opera Singer. It's going to be Bard Time Knee Jerk for Mage and Mike. Going to be full kite build Perfumer and then Bard Time Tied on the Officer. So what's interesting is Perfumer is not running double tied. I feel like Tied Knee Jerk is better than Flywheel Knee Jerk for Perfumer because she can rescue. Um, whereas the, uh, the Flywheel is really hit or miss against Opera Singer. Um... Because typically the best time to use Flywheel is to Flywheel an ability, which there's not really anything to Flywheel of Opera Singers besides her basic hit. Uh, either that or Flywheel to a pallet or window um, to avoid getting hit, right? Those are the best times to use Flywheel. And you only get it once every two minutes. So you're not going to get too many Flywheels per game. Max you're getting two. Most likely you're getting, uh, or sorry, Max you're getting like three or four, depending on how long the match goes. But on average, I think you get around two Flywheels per game. Um... And even then, the flywheel is like pretty inconsistent of a trait. So I, I love running flywheel because it saves me all the time. Um, but even then, dude, against an opera singer, I know that flywheel is not very good. Um, so let's see, who is she going to chase here first? This is going to be the acrobat. Acrobat and factory. I would not be chasing acrobat and factory. Uh, I mean, to be fair, who would you chase? Honestly, I feel like the best chase is mage. Yep, instant bomb out. Firebomb too, so no, no dashes. I feel like interaction would have maybe been better there uh that way it would have taken opera a long time to vault through that and break the pallet because the interaction bomb actually lasts a long time uh fire bomb and sticky bomb only last five seconds when the uh hunter walks into them i believe they last eight seconds um when you actually hit the hunter with it nice bomb there's interaction as well um if we can get behind a pallet force to break a pallet that'll be really solid for this acrobat here um okay dang not quite i guess sheesh um but yeah, as you can see, the uh, interaction lasts like 10 seconds or something. And just use a slow bomb to try and get to the window. Oh, to avoid the blink potentially. Oh, could you imagine? Could you imagine if that sticky bomb actually helped him avoid the blink? Oh my gosh, dude. That would have been insane. That would have actually been insane. Okay, that was a pretty standard kite against an opera singer, all things considered. I would say the ciphers are average, maybe slightly above average here. Um, blink was used, but three bombs were used as well. I don't know. I don't think the acrobat got a red bomb. I think he's a little ways away from a red bomb right now. Um, let's see. Who's going to come in for the rescue? Are we even going to rescue? The perfumer has wanted order. Um, and it looks like only one cypher is being worked on. The cypher is starting to be a little slow. Um, is officer going to come in? It's going to be after half. Okay, going to opt to choose to rescue after half once again. I guess all they want is a draw, so if that's what they think is best, then they might as well go for it. Um, although, your routing is a little predictable there, buddy. Uh, that's a little dangerous. Oh, that's dangerous. That's, this might be a double down. That might, that, oh, no double down? No double down. I think he had the opportunity to double down right there. Okay, well, he's dead. His firebomb will not matter. He is dead. He is dead. That is a dead Kokichi Oma, and she's getting full presence off of that, dude. Um, still, they are a full Cypher behind. Two Cyphers at 60 and climbing. Two are done. They need to have one more, though. And they did avoid getting double down, which is good for YS here. Right now, this is looking like a draw. This is indeed looking like a draw. They are keeping that Cypher Rush alive. Individual kiting Cypher Rush. That's all, that's all Opera Singer, dude. That is all Opera Singer is about. So yeah, saving after half was actually really good there because it bought the survivors a lot of time to decode. And they still have a lot of resources too. Three perfumes and three wands. And then one pocket watch for the officer. So they each have resources to work with. And yeah, that 8% cipher though. Hmm. 
I don't know how I feel about that one. But accelerated decoding should start hitting in about 10 to 20 seconds. Uh, never mind. Right now. <laughs> Literally right now. Um, Mage is going to be taking a hit here. And Blink is actually almost back up. Blink could actually end this kite a lot sooner than uh, Wolves may want it to. Uh, or sorry, YS rather. And the wand. Oh, but... Wow, good prediction from the opposite. He actually uh, is slow vaulted there. I don't think he wanted to slow vault there. That's really unfortunate. Didn't even need to use the blink. Um, are we gonna... We're gonna go up to the cypher? Really? Are we gonna slug out? That might be the strategy. Hold on, let's see. I'm gonna check the cypher. Cypher's at, she sees the cypher's at 50. Hmm. I guess she wants to burn all the items. Okay, there's the pocket watch. Do we, yeah, we TP back now? Are we gonna pick up the mage? Or are we gonna let him use his self-heal? He might not use his self-heal, let's see. Uh, he's not using it just yet. Not yet. Nope, he's gonna let himself be chaired, okay. Yep, gonna let himself be chaired, but the thing is he's chaired all the way away from the, um, the, the cypher, so you can't pressure that cypher at all. You do know that the perfumer is here, you can force it to come a little bit early. Oh. Or just go for the Cypher. I mean, sure, that works too, um, I guess. I mean, the officer has nothing to work with, so you can chair on the Cypher now. I actually agree. This this might be game-changing here. All the pallets are dropped, so she, it's going to take her a second to get the downs here. Um, officer should be dead right here. Yep, down he goes. And now you can chair on the Cypher. They're forced to start up a new one. But does this actually do anything for you is the real question. Will it actually do anything for you here? Because that Cypher that's being started up again is going to move very, very fast. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to move in like, what, 60, 50, that's like 55 seconds? How much? I think it's like less than a minute a Cypher takes uh, to be finished with Accelerated Decoding. Uh, and there's the Perfumer, yep, trying to come on in here. Maybe here a little bit early, honestly? Um, I think she's here a little bit early. Let's see. Maybe not quite. Using a Perfume. Trying to, trying to hit, trying to hit. Okay, that's one perfume. And the Cypher's not quite ready. There's the first flywheel, though. There's the flywheel. Okay. But does does she know? Does she recognize? Oh, I think she recognized. She has to... If she can kill the perfume, the perfume doesn't borrow time. And she, I think she recognizes. Yep. Choi knows. Choi knows. And you can leave her on the ground. Or you can pick her up, too. I mean, I guess that's fine. Um, hmm... Okay, so first officer has seen the chair. Down he goes. Officer has seen the chair, Perf has seen the chair, and Mage has seen the chair. Um, but they, yeah, they just pop because no BT. No BT, yep. Okay, can she make this a three man though? Can she make this a three man? I don't know. It, it all depends on if she can find the officer really, really fast here. She does still have Blink to work with. Let's see. Oh, I think she sees the officer. The gate is open. Oh, I think she makes it there before him, and she she has Blinko. Where did he get that football? No way! What? I didn't even notice. Where did he get that football? Yo, dude thought he was Will. What is that? I don't know where he got that football from. I honestly don't even know. He must have dug up a chest sometime. When? I don't know. <laughs> oh, it must have been at middle. It must have been at middle, I guess, huh? I wonder when they had time to dig that up. That's interesting. That actually saved the game. That that football was so lucky. That actually got them the draw. That's crazy, dude. All right, moving on to round two, first half. We're going to see Opera Ban on the survivor side. And Ivy is coming out. Yep, there she is. Uh, we're going to see Priestess, Cord, Lily, and Mike gaming for the bans. And then we're picking Anti, uh, Ant Anti Charles, Psych, and Merc for our survivors here, and um, I think this is a pretty solid team for an Ivy. Aeroplanist is a bit hit or miss, but Psyche is like one of the best uh, characters to run against Ivy because her chase sucks. If you can rock kite, you're good. Yep, you're, you're very good. And if she gets you down too early, she has to deal with stress, which means more chase, which means less focusing on ciphers. And Ivy is all about that map pressure, dude. Looks like we're gonna see the four corners spawn once again. Uh, rocking this like pretty common against Ivy. Hmm. I don't really know what the reasoning behind it exactly is. I can only really make inferences, but I don't know. I guess it's just to put distance between Ivy and themselves because of Yith. I don't know, dude. After the builds, we're going to see Detention, Insolence, Blink, the only Ivy build. 
And then we're going to see Bar Time Tide on the Mercenary, Bar Time Knee Jerk on the Psych, and then Bar Time Flywheel on Antiquarian and the Aeroplanist. So, yeah, pretty interesting builds here. Um, Anti with Flywheel makes sense, Psych with Knee Jerk makes sense. And then Charles, Charles is a really interesting character because he's pretty adaptable, right? You can kind of run whatever you want on Charles. Um, you can run knee, or knee Jerk Tide, you can run Bar Time Tide, you can run Bar Time Knee Jerk, Bar Time Flywheel, like. I don't know. The adaptable characters are always really, really fun to see um, what they choose to bring because it really just depends on what the survivors are looking for here. And right now, everything is all drawn up. The first round has been completely drawn up, meaning that we are going to see a guaranteed round three. And looking at the spawn selection, it looks like Ivy does want to chase the um, psychologist first, probably try to get her stress out of the way so we don't have to deal with that later. And we're seeing a pause. Wonderful. All right, back into it now. <laughs> I don't know, that was like an instant pause, dude. I guess somebody had some uh, messed up controls there. Okay, 63, 63. So one spook from the Yith is gonna do it here. Uh, let's see. She is gonna drop the power to get the Nidric speed. Tries to go for the main body spook, doesn't really work. Main body spook is trying to get, oh! Oh? Okay, she still gets the hit, she still gets the hit. Very, very good, very, very good. Um, now, I, I know I've, I've been telling everybody that I've been on my on my Hunter rank grind recently, uh, but something that's interesting to know is I've actually been practicing Ivy a little bit more, because um, Ivy is pretty strong in this meta, and as somebody who's been uh, suffering against rotation and people that hide against me, Ivy could very much so help with that. Um, so what's interesting here is this Ivy is focusing completely on the chase, unlike other Hunters that we've seen in IJL, where they will um, focus on chase, but also the ciphers at the same time, setting up tablets and all that good stuff. Um, this IV is completely and 100% focused on chase and nothing more than chase. And gets behind a pallet while the corruption is active, but goes for the spook and doesn't actually get the spook. That's crazy. This pallet is dropped here too. Gonna try and mind game this a little bit, but you can't mind game for it because there is a tablet here and she is gonna go down, dude. Yep. But look at that. Three cypher kite just because it's psychologist. Used up the blink. That, I think that was pretty solid. That was pretty solid. The issue here now. Oh, trim. Okay. No tram hit. Uh, but the issue here now is they have to keep the Cypher Rush alive, despite the fact that Ivy is going to be spamming them with tablets at like every single Cypher here. Um, and let's see, the Rescuer should obviously be coming in. Mercenary is chilling here, rocking the, uh, uh, what is it, Cabinet of Curiosity skin? That's, that, that's what it's called. Doesn't actually get spooked. Okay, wanting to buy as much time as possible. Here's the elbow pad. No Terra Shock, no Terra Shock, no Terra Shock, no Terra Shock. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mercenary? Oh, ooh, good rescue. That was a really good rescue from the Mercenary. Coming in, getting the rescue at the perfect time, and leaving completely unharmed. That was extremely good. Oh my gosh. That is extremely, extremely good. And here's the thing. When it comes to very small micromanaging stuff like that, not only do you not have to heal your Mercenary, but you also don't have the panic and deteriorate uh, inflictions as well. Because most hunters will carry both of those things, which means that your decoding is going to be slowed by 8%. Um, at least if you are injured, and then 3% across the field, which stacks. So everybody is decoding 3% faster, you could basically say, which does indeed keep the Cypher Rush alive. Which is why if you get a damage rescue, it's absolutely amazing to have happen. Um, but we are going to see the hit finally happening onto the Mercenary there. And the Antiquarian could honestly care less about the corruption. She is just decoding like a madman. She really doesn't care here. But it does make sense because the Psychologist is the main target here and she will be going down. So at the moment, this is looking like a draw for the Ivy here. Um... And we're gonna take her, where are we taking her? To Corner House? Is that where the chair's going? I think she's being taken to Corner House, yep. There we are, been taken to Corner House and possessing onto the Aeroplanist, beautiful work. And let's see, he is at 63 spook. So one more spook and he will be, um, he will be getting 100% corruption here. And yeah, now, now we're gonna try to, uh, now we're gonna try and lock off these ciphers here. Which you really need to do because they're getting pretty close to me. Oh, but the main body gets hit by the tram. That's so unfortunate. Oh, that is so unfortunate for D. Oh, that is actually so unfortunate. Okay, the Mercoder is off working on this cipher here. And we are going to not possess him. Oh, we're going to chase the mercenary. Okay. Not really what I had in mind, but I guess it's fine. Hmm. 
Gonna try and mind game this pot here a little bit. She does have Link to end. I am surprised she got that hit. That was such a risky play. Oh, she has Impulsive. That's why she got it. Okay. Um, well, I mean, the Mercenary is going to go down, which is nice for you. And the last Cypher, I believe, is at two-story mid? Um, I actually couldn't tell if that was Cabin or two-story mid. It, lo it looks Okay, it looks like uh, Cabin was finished here. Um, and two-story mid is going to be the final Cypher. We can put a tablet up there, which I believe there was one up there. Okay, now, now, now Charles has to be a little bit careful. I don't think he cares, though, honestly. At the moment, I don't think he cares, because I was basically primed here. Um, and she is going to have to teleport without using the Yith. Gets the drop-down hit, but can't do anything. Now she can't get back up. She can't get back up, and they get the rescue. Um, why did he drop down? Why did he drop down? Why did he drop down? I have no idea why he did that. That doesn't make any sense. Um... I feel like you just stay up there, get your corruption. I guess she was trying to like be very sneaky with it. Make it make it seem like, oh, I'm totally gonna try and come after you. You have heartbeat, so you have to respect. I don't know, dude. I'm I'm not really sure what that was all about. Uh, but it existed, that's for sure. Now, is there any way, I guess, is what I'm looking at here. Is there any way um, for them to get better than a draw? I think that there is. They they do have the position here, because Mercenary has no elbow pads. Um, and the Cypher is not ready. They do not have the Cypher ready. In fact, the Antiquarian is just breaking tablets right now. This actually could be a 4K even. Like, they have a Cypher ready and she's not going to it. I mean, yeah, there is a tablet on it, but still, I feel like it's at least worth to try. I guess you have the other, you have the other Cypher. You have the other Cypher. Um, but yeah, the Mercenary does go down. And Charles is injured. Antiquarian is not. Antiquarian hasn't seen any action, which is unfortunate, because I want to see her beat up the hunter with the stick. <laughs> um, let's see. Spook into that, into nothing else. Okay, that's fine. Oh, I thought they just popped there for a second. I was about to be like, hello? What was that pop? Um, and yeah, we are going to full presence the aeroplanist, Antiquarian. Oh my gosh. Oh, she couldn't spook. Oh, no, there's a spook. Oh, impulsive maybe? Impulsive! Yep. Beautiful work from the Ivy. And they cannot pop. Oh my gosh, she's getting aggressive. She's getting aggressive here, dude. She's getting aggressive. I feel like that teleport was kind of a mistake, though. I won't lie. I feel like it was a bit of a mistake. Uh, I mean, I guess we can set up another tablet here. Uh, full Prez is not recharged yet. We still have eight seconds till Full Prez is recharged. Goes for the blink, gets the hit on the Mercenary. And they haven't popped. They have two Cyphers Prime, but they just can't pop. They just can't pop. Um, unless they pop right here. Oh, they do. That's actually really good. That's actually really good. I don't think Dean knew it was primed. That's actually incredibly good. Okay, but now now's the time to set up your strategy. Where you have the Yith at one gate. And then your main body at the other gate. Or we just go for the Antiquarian who can just flywheel. And flute jump away from full press and still gets hit. That's crazy, dude. Imagine putting in all that work and yet you still just go down. That's full press ivy for you, dude. That is full press ivy for you. Okay. It still feels like a draw, though. It still feels like a draw. I guess ivy is kind of just a draw hunter now. I don't know. She feels pretty figured out in see. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Charles? Charles, buddy? Oh, no, Charles. You don't have hover. And she, you're, you're getting pushed away. You're getting pushed away. Oh, yeah, I do pop the jetpack here. I think I think Ivy's trying to, to bait the jetpack here. Um, but he is so far. He's so far now. He is absolutely too far. That's a 3K. Oh, jetpack, jetpack, jetpack. But that's all he has. Literally, once once the Yith cooldown is ready, it's GG's, dude. Yep, okay. And that should be GG. But the flywheel? And he respects the pallet? No way. No way he escapes this. No way, dude. Like, yeah, Ivy's chase sucks, but surely can't be that bad. Okay. Um. Yo, this aeroplane is insane right now, dude. But he's still trapped there. He's still trapped. And he can't stay there forever. Because he does have half health, so detention doesn't matter. And she, Ivy just waits here. She just waits. She, can, she has all the time in the world. She can just wait. She just wait, waits for the tablet, and then boom, you're clipped. Oh, man, he's stuck between a rock and a hard place, bro. There's nothing he can do. 
Yeah, there's literally nothing he can do here. It's over. The dungeon is too far anyway. If the dungeon was a little bit further away, then I'd say maybe there's a chance, but yeah, it's over, bro. Good try, good try. Good try. Still, Ivy with the 3k, not quite the draw. But the 3k, Ivy getting another W under her belt. Moving on to round two, second half. Cho Ai is up once again. We got Ever Sleeping Town. I wonder if he's going to bring out the clown. We might see the clown here, or, or just Ivy. I don't know. I, I kind of want to see the clown. Uh, we're going to be banning Opera Singer uh, from the survivor side, and then Seer, Aeroplane is Patient, and Mercenary. That's not really clown bans. Um, and I don't know I don't know if you want to go clown of this, because Coordinator um, and Priestess and probably Officer too. Oh, wait. The Will Brothers. Uh, 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 you see that? <laughs> Talk to the hand. No, okay. No clown, but wheel instead. Um, but yeah, Officer, Cord, Cheer, and Priestess. I feel like, you know, like with, with Priestess and Cord, it's not the best smiley, uh, you know, matchup. But wheel, huh? I don't know if I remember Choi playing wheel. But I'm always down to see Wheel, bro. I'm always down to see Wheel. I, I, I personally think Wheel is the hypest uh, hunter in the game to watch, just because of how fast he is, and, and how and how aggressive of a character he is. Uh, I don't know. I, I I think Wheel is the best design hunter in the game, or at least uh, for from a viewing perspective. Maybe, maybe not so much uh, playing against, because I know a lot of people don't like playing against him. He feels kind of cheesy. Um, but at least like from a viewing perspective, I think he's like the best design hunter in the game Just having two different forms one fast one slow but regardless of that We're going to see detention trump card and excitement on this wheel. So no insolence That's something to uh, make note of and we see the coordinator and uh, cheerleader are bringing bar time knee jerk Priestess has bar time flywheel and then officer has bar time tied so interestingly enough um, The priestess is the only one with flywheel here uh, and Flywheels is obviously very, very good against Breaking Wheel. But I don't know who the first chase target is going to be. Uh, well, no, hold on. It's probably going to be the Coordinator because he has Excitement. Um, that's the most likely option. I guess you could also chase... I mean, Chiller is not really that good. I, th I think you can beat Beep away from Full Presence. I think if you time it correctly, Chiller can get out of the range of Full Presence. I actually don't know. I think it depends on how close the wheel gets out of wheel form while um, close to her. Uh, but it looks like he's gonna opt to go for the priestess. No, not the priestess. Okay. Oh, it is gonna be the coordinator. Yep. Gonna be the coordinator. Rocking the Amazon Prime skin, of course. Um, this is, yeah, she's in a pretty bad area, too. This is, like, probably the weakest spot to kite wheel on this, uh... Well, maybe not the weakest spot, but one, one of the weaker spots, um, to, ca to kite wheel here. So I actually want to see, because I went up against a wheel around this spot recently, too, and I want to know how this coordinator is gonna kite this out. Just wants to go out into the open here. Um, attempting to avoid, yeah, but the wheel just has such good control. So now at this point, uh, the coordinator is basically just dead because excitement is almost ready. Um, so she either shoots the gun, misses, shoots the gun, and excitement happens, or he gets a trap and it's just GG. Um, so if she could just keep her distance away from the wheel as long as possible, that would be the best case scenario. Oh, hold on, let's see here. Oh, what? Oh, Priest just took it, that's why. That was really solid. That was really good priestess support right there. Not gonna take the long portal just yet though. Not gonna take it just yet. Cause obviously it is it is wheel. Um, so this is actually really good. She is maintaining a lot of distance thanks to support of the priestess here. Um, and she has yet to shoot the gun. Probably gonna drop this here too. Yep. Beautiful work, beautiful work. And priestess is here to maybe help out once again. Oh my gosh, the support goes crazy. And I think at this point, I think at this point, the court should know. Oh my gosh. Oh, it does get the hit. Does get the hit. So close, dude. I would say at this point, I'm pretty sure the coordinator knows that he has excitement because of the fact that he hasn't used Blink yet. Because um, it, it's been 30 seconds past when Blink has been up. And there, there would have been, there was a really, really solid chance um, that he would have blinked there earlier, but he didn't. So. The court probably knows that he uh, has either excitement because um, he decided to chase the coordinator first, which should make it somewhat obvious that yeah, they have excitement. Uh, that or he'll have something like abnormal, but most wheels don't really just run straight abnormal. Um, does hit the coordinator once again though, and she's gonna go into graveyard. Yeah, gonna gonna take the portals into graveyard. Don't get hit by that now. Boop. Because <laughs> you might need excitement's right there. That'd be so funny. Um, break that long portal real quick. Yep, there we go. And are we gonna see him? No, he's gonna wheel on over to the to the coordinator. Okay, that, that checks out, that checks out. Yeah, might as well, might as well. I mean, you're faster, so you might as well. Drops a sticker too, oh my gosh. Not the default sticker, bro. You can do better than that. 
Come on, you can do better than that. I actually don't know who was, whose sticker that was. Um, still, two cybers are done, one at 70, one at 30. And, oh, the 70 is the graveyard one. Priestess is here to have this rescue. Um, but excitement is still online, and that's going to make it really nice flywheel. It's going to make it really difficult for Corner to actually use her item here. Uh, I think she should probably just shoot it, though, before she dies. Just so that, um, full press? Oh, no, he's not full press yet. Right, right, right. Duh. He's not running insolence. I'm so used to wheels having insolence. Um, okay, he put a trap there. I don't think it would last that long, though. Uh, but yeah, it's it's basically just over because I want to I want to see before she gets snapped down I want to see the coordinator go for the gun um, Gun here excitement. Yep. There it is. Yeah, there it is So for, force out the tray if you're gonna die anyway use your item, you know use your item She knew it was excitement, but at least the thing is she put his tray on to cooldown. So that's something Exoda decoding is active um, They should know what his build is by now. He hasn't he didn't there was no confined size no insulin So they know it's detention trump card and they know it was excitement, so they know there's going to be a potential abnormal or peepers here in the future. Um, but four cyphers are done, and I don't think they're going to get a chance to abnormal. This is looking more like a draw here. Survivor's playing it very, very well. Um, I don't really know how the wheel is supposed to make this better than a draw. Uh, which is interesting, because this entire set has just been draws back and forth so far. And he's not even a full presence. He is not even... Oh, misses the trap, too. Had he got that trap, that could have been really good. Um... Okay, does get the trap, and does indeed get the hit too. They have to open up a new cipher. Um, Tree Leader and Priestess do decode a little slowly. I'm surprised. I mean, I guess the, the, the kite did last a while, but yeah, Tree Leader and Priestess and Officer for that matter, they all have decoding debuffs, which you don't really see this many decoding debuff characters come out um, right now. And she does beep beep away from full presence, so yeah, that is possible for sure. I think she already had like a good starting amount of distance though. Um, Dodging that even though she's kind of slow. Beep beeps to the window, and he just takes the snap. He just takes the snap. But now he's a full presence. Um, or he was a full presence before that snap. And that Cypher goes to 79. He's trying to, yeah, he's trying to slug it out. I think he's trying to prevent the Cypher pop for as long as possible, and then maybe switch to either Peepers or Abnormal. Um, yeah. Okay, gets the officer down. He didn't have snap, so that makes sense. Now, are we going to see him trait swap here? I think, I think Abnormaling is kind of pointless. But what would you even swap to here? Excitement is kind of pointless. Um, not gonna chair? Um, what's he gonna do instead? I'm confused. He's gonna... Are you gonna trade swap or anything? Um... Oh, he got it! He got the trap! He actually got the trap! But the Cypher's primed, so... Why didn't you chair the officer? I, 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 I don't understand. Why didn't he chair the officer? I, I'm actually just really, I, I, I won't lie everybody, I'm actually extremely confused why he didn't just chair the officer. Um, yeah, snippity snap, down goes the cheer. Swaps to TP! I guess he was maybe trying to force him to, <gasps> No! Why are we seeing so many tram hits recently? That's insane! That's actually insane. Teleport wheel, and then Priestess gets hit by the tram. You, 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 you're kidding. You're actually kidding. I mean, it's you know what's funny is it's so probably a draw because all Officer has to do here is just stall this out. But like, he doesn't have any spikes. That's not gonna do anything. The wheel has to the wheel has to be the one to commit here because Officer has a watch. He can he can tide rescue the Priestess, and then Sheer can open up the door. Um. Uh, yeah. So, oh, he's kind of slow though. The wheels, the, the wheel has to be the one to commit here. He has to be the one to commit. The officer is at half health, but why didn't she open up the gate? Oh, she's gonna go open up the other gate. I think she should have finished opening that gate first. Uh, wait a minute. He's trying to stall it out for as long as possible. Um. Okay, I don't really know what exactly. I think they can still draw this though. I think what needs to happen is, oh, not yet. He got the hit. The rescue happens. Priestess just portals away. At this point, she just has to spam her portals. But he knew. He knew about the cheer. He knew about the cheer. Okay, puts a trap down there. Three people are still up. Oh my gosh, dude. First officer. Oh, okay, first officer is down. But, oh my gosh. And there's the priestess. She got those portals. Dude, I don't. I don't... 
I don't know if they, I don't know what happens here. The tension is out, but they're all damaged, so it doesn't really matter. You can share the first officer here, but at this point, you can just go for the long portal. Oh my gosh, long portal. Does he knows though? But the teleport, the, te or the teleport's back up. Teleport is indeed back up. Just teleport. Just teleport. Oh no, just teleport, buddy. There's the TP, and he's gonna force the cheer out. Force the cheer out. Force the cheer. Oh, okay. All right, it's up to this priestess now. It's up to this priestess. She has. <gasps> oh wait, no, that's so smart. Wait, is it? She flywheel right because she flywheels the trap. Dang, dude, that was so smart. She heard him turn into wheel form. Knows that he can't get out of wheel form for like seven, eight seconds. Use the portal in. That was so smart. Oh my gosh, that was actually incredibly smart. He even dropped the trap, but she had the flywheel. That was so smart, bro. That was actually so smart. Dang, that was actually such an exciting game. Oh my gosh. That was probably one of, that was like one of my favorite games I think I've seen in all of IGL slash IVL so far. That was so good. And you know what's so funny? Both sides are completely drawed. It's eight to eight. Every single match has been a draw so far. Uh, we're gonna see Opera Singer and Ivy ban from the Survivor side, then Seer, Antiquarian, Aeroplanist, and Prospector ban uh, from the Hunter side. And we're gonna be going with Gravekeeper, Embalmer, Patient, and Melly, which I love to see Melly. Melly is there specifically because she's good on Chinatown. And so is Clown. Choi is famous for his Clown. Clown is very good on Chinatown. That's his best map. But Melly counters Clown and is also good on Chinatown. So yeah, the, the Gravekeeper pick is interesting as well. I guess Grave can uh, tank the hits from the Clown as well. Uh, I guess they're just hard countering his Clown. They do not want to fight his Clown on Chinatown. Um, and the Embalmer is there as well. They don't really have, um, I guess on the, the Embalmer is fine. I, I was looking like, what what is the Embalmer pick for? I guess it's just so they can keep Cypress alive. If they, I, I guess they're just hard countering his clown here. Like they're, they're literally just hard countering the clown. I mean, he could go wheel again. I don't know. Oh, going for the Night Watch. Okay. Um, yeah, this is this this comp is okay for Night Watch. Night Watch can deal with Embalmer pretty easily. Although I just hate Embalmer because he just buys time for free. Patient isn't that bad. Uh, Melly, I hate to say, isn't that bad for Night Watch. Gravekeeper can be annoying just because he can tank hits and you're a basic hit hunter, but like, that's kind of this case for everybody else. And honestly, I don't really mind Grave too much. I think Night Watch is okay against this comp. He's actually fine. You just have to pick like the right target. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's he's at this point in, in tournaments, bro, he's a draw king. He, he's a draw king, bro. Night, Night Watch is seen as like a draw king. Um, although he's pretty inconsistent. Like, we, we see Nightwatch sometimes get three escaped. We see him get uh, draws most of the time. And sometimes we still get him see, see him get three Ks and four Ks. It really is just, like, a bit inconsistent. I don't know. Night Nightwatch is just a very honest character, so it's really hard to, like, mind game with him. Um, with, like, red lighting and whatnot, because he doesn't have a red light. He can't red light trick. Um, I wonder if we're going to see Warp. I, I've been trying to like watch Nightwatch footage from Comp to learn more as a Nightwatch main. I wonder if we're going to see Warp because people have been telling me to go Warp a lot more. So I'm kind of curious to see what we'll, uh, what we'll see the Nightwatch go against. Uh, or what, what his trait will be against this comp here. And speak of the devil, it is indeed Warp. We're going to be seeing Detention Insolence in Warp. So he wants to snowball off of this. Yeah, Night Nightwatch, again, his early game... I'm gonna be honest, it sucks. It's terrible. Slow wind and like, the fact that you have to, the only way you can get wind charges is by using up your ability is so annoying sometimes. Sometimes I wish the wind charges would recharge passively, like almost all other hunters' abilities, like Geisha Butterflies recharge passively, Nyad uh, dashes recharge passively, but Night Watches, he has to use his ability up to get more of his other ability, which can be really annoying sometimes, cause, Sometimes you want an ability, like you'll want one of those wind charges, so you'll have to use up your wind. But then when you do that, you won't have any wind to chase your target with, and you'll have to wait for it to be back on cooldown. And it, it can be really annoying trying to figure out when exactly to use the wind. Um, because you want to... See, see how they always start with it? They, he, like, his ability is on cooldown for 13 seconds, so if he were to find a target right now, he would not be able to win them. Obviously, rotation uh, is a thing. And what's nice about um, Nightwatch dealing with early game rotation is he does get these wind charges pretty early, because by the time... Uh, he actually gets onto a target. He usually has one to two wind charges. Um, and it looks like he's going to be chasing the Gravekeeper in Hotel. You don't really want to chase a target in Hotel, if possible. Um, yeah, it looks like he wants to chase the Entomologist here. But yeah, see, see this, dude? See this? He's going to go for a wind here again. Yep. Go for a third wind. Now he has three wind charges. Uh, that, that's the one good thing. That's the one good thing about uh, Nightwatch dealing with early rotation. Is that he gets all his wind charges by the time 
um, it's ready. But yeah, it can also be quite frustrating uh, to go up against. So yeah, he's trying to mind game it here a little bit. Uh, are we gonna see him warp? No way. We are gonna see him warp. Wow, okay. Just wants to get the first hit as quickly as possible. Oh, and she tried to do some little B trick, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's risky, dude. It's it's pretty risky to go for that. Um, he does indeed close the warp. He just wanted to start the chase earlier. Um, I guess that's a possibility for warp. I don't know. I mean, what what Cho I needs is all he needs is a draw. All all he needs is a draw right here. Um, good good flyover from the melee, but she is gonna go down. Once again, yeah, entomologist is uh not crazy good against Nightwatch. My mains are battling it out here, bro. I hate to see melee go down. But yeah, it, it, it checks out, bro. It checks out. Uh, so we might see him kill the bees here. She's going to opt to yeah, just push her bees away. Again, I still think Melly should have a buff where she can put her bees away when she's knocked down or on the chair. I know that's part of like the strategy is like, oh, don't... Y you're, you're like, your bees are a good resource. Don't lose them. But like, I don't know, dude. I wish you could put them away. Oh, the bees are actually going to try and help out the Gravekeeper here a little bit. Going to shove the Nightwatch back. Beautiful. This is actually really good here. Obviously, he can dash past the bees. But that is really good. Um, just so that um, he can't immediately try to go for like a, some double downs here. But he is a full presence already. That's very scary. Two Cyphers are done. One at 50, 15, and 6. Um, Melly's just chilling. She's just chilling on this pallet. Okay, this is a really good pallet. But it's also a bit of a scary pallet too. You want to make the... Oh! Yeah, she's dead. Yeah, you, you, it's it's just going back and forth, back and forth. Shove him with the bees. Shove him with the bees. <laughs> oh, that's so goofy, dude. Um, and Balmer did not see the melee, so you might actually see her get sold off here. Um, that way they can just try to push for a draw. Because she doesn't have anything to rebound with. She has no bees, no flywheel. If she, had, if, she had, if she was coffin, that would have been really good. But I don't know if they had the opportunity to do that. Um... And yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, okay, so maybe insolence on Chinatown. I, I'm sorry, I'm, as a Nightwatch player, again, I'm trying to learn from this. I guess, um, yeah, I, I, I guess insolence would be good on this map because there's not a lot of paths that you're like are forced to break on this map. Um, fast pallet break is like usually what I always bring on Nightwatch, but like there's not a lot of pallets that you have to break on this map. There's like what maybe four that you have to the other ones you can kind of just mind game i i'd say there's probably around like four to five pallets on this map that you like absolutely need to break obviously one of them being the god pallet the god pal you absolutely have to break um and there, there's several the, the ones near restaurant you have to break like at least one of them the, these over here you have to break like one of them um yeah, otherwise it's just mind games bro it's just mind games um that's why i like chinatown chinatown feels very uh I shouldn't say Hunter. I, I guess it is a pretty good Hunter map. Um, I don't know. For Nightwatch, at least. For Nightwatch. Now, Melly is unfortunately gone. They did indeed sell her, which I am crying about. And the Cyphers are slightly slow. I won't lie. The Embalmer is right there. He actually might be able to push for more than a draw here. I won't lie. Because the Embalmer is here too early. Okay. And now, now you just try to force her to get the rescue here. Um, this is going to be quite the early rescue. Yeah, quite the early rescue. And Embalmer goes down. Does he use his coffin instantly, or does he? No, he's gonna, he's gonna push for. The, yeah, he's gonna push. No, maybe. Ooh, okay. He wants to slow the cipher us. That's really smart. Okay, okay. I like this. I like this. Um, he gets the grave down, and then he just warps back, right? Chair warp back, chair warp back. Yep, chair warp back. Oh my gosh, dude. He's actually gonna get a 4K, isn't he? He can take the warp on back. Beautiful. And a bomber's already heading back over there. Oh my gosh. I, I think the bomber needs to use the coffin like right here. Oh, he's dead. He's dead, he has to use the coffin. He has to use your coffin now. Or force the chair. Okay, I guess that works. Well, Grave is being sold. That's it. Like, this has got to be 4K. I wonder where they went wrong. I guess the... Oh, snap. He's pushing for that 4K, dude. He's pushing... I actually don't know why he didn't chair there. I, I feel like it would have been better for um him to chair. Because now he can self... No, he's self... Oh, maybe it was just so he couldn't self-heal. Ooh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, that's his last hook. I was about to say, if he had another hook, he might be able to make it to the chair. I think. I think he's done. I, I think I think it's over. Like I think there's nothing that the survivors can do at this point. No flywheel. Yep, they're all down. Uh, Grave is gonna get. He's gonna die, and then he go back for the embalmer here. 
And he has to he has to use his self heal if they want any chance of winning. Um, I mean, I guess he's gonna chair force the coffin out first. Yep, force out the coffin. He's looking around for it. Does he know where it is? I think he, yeah, he knows where it is. He knows it's right there. Are you gonna go straight for it? No, you're gonna go for the. Wait, why are you going for the patient? Um, you're gonna chair him? I guess he's scared of the cipher. Hmm. Is that really? Are you really scared of the cipher? Does he might think one is primed? Is he gonna chair? Oh no, he's not gonna chair. He's gonna do the. He's gonna do the struggle free strat, isn't he? Yep. We're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing the struggle free strat. Okay, okay. Warp is back up, though. Warp is indeed back up. Um, that's really good game sense to know that they don't have a Cypher ready. Boop, down goes the patient once again. And let's see if we can find out the Embalmer here. He's probably going to check the Cypher progress here real quick. I guess... It, no, I, no, that's just really smart. He knows all the Cyphers are on this side of the map, so he can go over here, check the Cyphers, because they're kind of Cypher locked. Yeah, they Cypher locked themselves. They're all right around here, so until he picks up Tanias, he knows he's safe right here. He knows nobody's on the ciphers, so... Yeah, I think he wants to, like, make the patient use up his self-heal. Um, but since they're cipher-locked, he, he doesn't have anything to worry about. Oh, no, Embalmer's coming into the cipher now. Oh, he just taps it, he just taps it. Oh, does he see him? He sees him, he sees him. He sees him, he sees him. Yep, and the patient gets back up. So at this point, it's up to the Embalmer to kite it out. Which is not possible, because he's he's dead. Oh, nice flywheel, though! Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. Thing is, he also doesn't... He also doesn't, he doesn't even have borrow time, bro. He doesn't even have borrow time. Oh, that's so funny. Okay, well, patient used up his self-heal. He got what he wanted. And that is going to be GG's, because you kill the patient now. You know he has no self-heal. Um, so, yeah, that that is a certified GG right there. Boop. That's a dead patient. You go back to the Embalmer with your warp. And that will be G, geez, yeah, warp Nightwatch, looking uh, looking pretty good. He does just barely get back to his warp in time, and does he see the embalmer? Not quite. No, he, he sees him. He sees him. Yeah, it, it figures that you'd want to go to hotel, the strongest kiting area, but it's it's GGs at this point, bro. It's GGs. You would need to you would need to kite out this Nightwatch for three like three and a half minutes, and also get dungeon just for a one escape. Just for a one escape, dude. Oh, gets the fast win. Beautiful work. Beautiful mind games there. And that is going to be it. Yep. Beautiful stuff from Cho Eyes Nightwatch. I definitely learned a thing or two there. Um, mainly that insolence on Chinatown seems pretty good. <laughs> and same with warp. I guess I just need more practice with warp. That first warp, I don't I was like a little concerned about it, but it actually turned out to be really good because it closed off their like it's completely ended the early game rotation, so. Yeah, I guess Warp really is helping out um, some of these hunters here. What am I looking at? What is this? Uh, oh, this is the animation for 4K. Okay. Yeah, get him out of here, Ithaqua. Get him out of here. Bye-bye now. Sorry, Melly. feel bad that Melly's there, but you know. Nightwatch, he's got to do it, bro. He's got to do it. <laughs> On to potentially the final match here. We are going to see round three, second half. And uh, Opera, Ivy banned from uh, server side. Then Coordinator, Priestess, Antiquary, and Norton bans. Uh, from the hunter side and it looks like we're going to be seeing uh, Mike gaming mercenary mechanic and Melly coming out poor Melly is getting Mike Wazowski right now It should be Mike to get Mike Wazowski not Melly um, But you know what? It's all right. It's all right. She likes hiding her face. So I'm sure she's fine with it <laughs> But yeah mechanic is interesting because mechanic can push cypher rush pretty hard even if she gets first chase I feel like mechanic is like a pretty good survivor for securing draws if she gets chased because while she's on the chair with snooze she can just have her butt out to code um and that doesn't seem too bad i feel like she's like a pretty good survivor to push for draws even if she has like a terrible kite because as long as your bot isn't found like you're good you just have to hide the bot from the start of the match and then i don't know i, I feel like i feel like it's pretty like hit or miss though but yeah Nightwatch is going to be coming out once again, though. And here's the thing. YS needs a 4K if they want to keep this all drawn up for a round four. And getting a 4K against this comp is not going to be easy. Because if you ask me, um, Acrobat can be pretty tough for Nightwatch sometimes. And this is a pretty good map for Acrobat. I mean, Acrobat is broken. But I, I struggle with Acrobat because, obviously, he's just such a good kiter. Mercenary is fine. Melee is fine. And Mechanic, obviously, she sucks. But, you know, if, as long if her bot's out there, that's what can put the pressure on the Nightwatch. Because, again... 
Nightwatch can't do much about the bot if he can't if he can't find it early because Nightwatch has absolutely no map pressure. The only map pressure he gets is like all uh, all other all other hunters, and that is if he uh, chairs on a cipher. Otherwise, he has no way to pressure ciphers at all um, without that warp or teleport. So spawns are going to be pretty standard here. I don't really know who you're going to want to chase though. But then again, you don't want to make it too obvious. So I've learned you don't want to make your first chase too obvious. But I feel like he's going to want to make it or uh, run toward either the entomologist or toward the mechanic. Those are the two ideal chase targets. Ideally, the mechanic would be nice, but she's going to be rotating like crazy. So we'll just have to see. Ooh, now look at these builds here. Detention, Insolence, Warp on the Nightwatch. Same Nightwatch build. We're going to see Bar Time Flywheel on both Mike and Melly. And then it's going to be full kite build mechanic with bottom time tied mercenary as always. So yeah, th this mechanic looks like she really wants to take the kite while her bot just decodes. So imagine if I'm predicting like the full build of mechanic, you're gonna want um, knee jerk, you're gonna want flywheel, you're gonna want um, uh, rescue from the chair boost, like speed boost, and then you're gonna want max snooze. Like that's the, that's the full build right there. And obviously self heal, but like everybody should have self heal. I still personally think self heal should be built into survivors kits. If tinnitus is built into the hunters, I think I think self heal should be built into the survivors. Um, did I say hunter? I don't even know. Yeah, cause tinnitus used to be on the persona web for hunters. I, I, I feel like self heal should be on the survivors. Cause like, why, why do you have to like put it? I don't know, it just feels kind of weird. It's like the most basic of traits. Like so all survivors should have self heal. So why is it even on the Persona web? You know, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it would it would save you five points to put into something else. I don't think it would make the game uh, more struggles in the survivor favor. I don't know, dude. Um, so it's gonna be yeah, we see deteriorate panic, uh, impulsive, and then hunter's instinct as the uh, extra little traits are. Dang, the bot! Not going down without a fight, dude. Well, the bot will be going down. And he's getting presents from that, but it does waste time here. Uh, he knows what the mechanic is, and gonna be doing a similar warp. Oh my goodness, a very similar warp. I guess okay. Warp night watch seems to be the way right now. <laughs> um, I guess it is more map dependent and whatnot, and in, in team comp dependent. Okay, it was waiting. It looked like he was waiting for either a flywheel or a bot body block there. Uh, mechanic might not be the best pick if she can't get this bot. Oh, but the bees here. The bees. Can we get it? Can we drop off the bot maybe? I, I feel like, I feel like, see, what's dangerous is if she bot body blocks, this night one's going to be a full presence so fast, dude. Um, flywheels to the pallet. Oh, unfortunate, unfortunate, unfortunate there, dude. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I say unfortunate, but YS does want that 4K. So, that honestly wasn't the worst down of all time. Like, the Cyphers are still pretty far along. I mean, the Mercenaries isn't that far along. Uh, but the issue here is the bot was found. There's no bot on the field right now. You can bot body block, but that's all you really have. Um, and I can't, I can't tell if the mechanic has snooze. That, that chair might be moving a little bit slower. Um, but melee bees have been used up quite a bit too. Two cyphers are now done. And it's going to be after half rescue. Uh, I guess that makes sense because the mechanic can't really kite it out, but like the bot is kind of pointless at this at this point now. Oh, what? Why? Hello? Bot? Okay, so what? What? Huh? Why did you rescue it like 60? That doesn't make any sense. D you had you could have bought like 20 more seconds of decoding time. Why did you rescue it like 60 at the chair? That makes no sense. Then she wasted the bot. Why did you waste the bot? You know what you could have done? Mercenary could have come up and picked up your bot for later. Why did you just waste the bot for nothing? That You wouldn't have been able to kite that out anyway? I, I completely disagree with the mechanic and the mercenary play right there. That doesn't make any sense to me. I feel like if, the, if you're, if you're going to die to Tide anyway, but you have Tide. Let the Tide do its thing. If you're rescuing after... That's why I think. Rescue a Tide first and then let her get the bot out somehow, maybe. Um... Oh, rest in peace, Firebomb. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like the bot needed to like come out somehow. I feel like she needed to either bring out the bot earlier or leave the bot. So, cause, cause like she just let the bot die. Mercenary could have gone and picked up that bot and used it to open up the icy gate for late game. Like that could have been really, really good. That could have wasted a lot of the Night Watch's time, especially if you warped onto the gate. I don't know, dude. Woo! Scary. I'm just saying, bro, if that was Geisha, if that was Geisha, oh, Mr. Flywheel. I'm just saying if that was Geisha or Mary, that would have hit um, through the pallet. Just saying.
Just saying, Nightwatch doesn't have that privilege, but Mary and Geisha do. Just want to say that. Just, just want to make that clear, bro. So many times I've dropped a pallet exactly like that, Acrobat, and I still get hit when it's Geisha or Mary. Uh, but not Nightwatch. Nope. Not Nightwatch. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so the Cyphers are still moving, though. They can still make this a draw. But yeah, that, that's what Wolves need. They want they want the draw. And I, I, you know, I'm criticizing the, the gameplay style from Wolves here, but it's still a draw. It is still a draw. Ooh, just walks to the pallet. Dang, dude. Mercy takes the hit there, but it's over, dude. It's it's over. There's no way. There's just no way. I I, th I think what really mattered was that like the Night Watch really was able to snowball off the fact that like people were kind of in the same area from the last game, and warping onto the rescuer was such a good play. Um, plus the embalmer being like way too close for the rescue as well. Like, yeah, I, I feel like Wyas has made some mistakes with uh, where their survivors were positioned. Because the Nightwatch forced a really early rescue, which ended up making the Embalmer get double downed. Um, yeah, so I, I just I just don't agree with the Embalmer. I think that was where it all fell apart, was when the Embalmer went for an early rescue and then just died. <laughs> so waits for the flywheel. Uh, you know what's so weird is I see people in tournament, they don't react to... Uh, or not, not everybody, they don't always react to the, uh, the, the hit. And unfortunately, Melee does go down there. Um, but you know, when I, when I am playing Nightwatch... Uh, like on just like NAEU um, in rank, people are like reacting to my attack speed. Then I can't like people are, like really really good survivors, right? Because I've been going up against like some of the best of the best on the server recently. Um, like full full like full VC China teams right now going to be warping to that. Uh, there's nobody over there though. Maybe it's a bait. Maybe it's just a bait. It, it very well could just be a bait. He has tinnitus. He doesn't want to. Yeah, I think that's there as bait. Maybe. He's looking. Yeah, he's looking. He's looking. He's looking. Yeah, he's gonna go back towards it. He's gonna go back towards it. That was really smart. That was really smart. That was really smart, actually. Because now, now, now you know those two. Even though, even though Acrobat and Melee can heal up, you know the mercenaries over here, um, and you can just commit to him for right now. Breaking that pallet right there. Zoom. And are we gonna break this pallet? No, we are not. How are we gonna deal with this right here? Are we, we're just my. Oh, nice mind game. Nice mind game. Just hit on the mercenary. They do heal up Melly. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't know what you do here. Because now you just now they just open up a new cipher. You just open up a new cipher now. You can you can guard this one all you want, but now you're gonna have to pressure two ciphers. And they are somewhat cipher locked. But yeah, Nightwatch just can't cover all this distance all in this time. And what is he doing? He is kind of lost right now. And he sees Melly working on that, but he also sees that one, so he has to pressure two different ciphers at once. Which is not going to make things easy, and plus this is an Acrobat here, and Acrobat has all the resources in the world. Um, two Sticky Bombs, here comes the first one. Uh, out we go, out we go, there we go. Walk around the Sticky Bomb, use the Fast Wind. Oh, it misses the Fly on the Fast Wind, dude! Uh, what I was talking about earlier, though, with the, the, the pro teams that I've been fighting um, on NAE, not pro teams, but you know, really, really solid teams, is that they all are somehow able to react to my hits. Whereas, like, in tournament, people just like, oh, if I'm near the hunter, I'm going to flywheel. But, like, straight up, people just react when they see my hit. Which is, like, what you should be doing with flywheels. You should be doing it, like, on reaction. Um, but, like, I don't know, dude. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> they must have, like, three ping or something because, like, it's crazy. Um, but here we go. We are going to see basement being an option. And they're just going to pop. Wow. They're just going to pop. They realize basement is just too strong. Uh, they, they, and Acrobat, this is his first chair, so he has to stay in the basement. They, they're kind of in a... Oh, but the crow is on the mercenary. Oh, dear. Um, he needs to somehow fork his... Because, again, all they need is one out. That's why you also pop here. They only need a single person out. Um, so you chase the entomologist. You can probably get her down very quickly here. Because you, you just mind game this pallet here. Nice flywheel from Melly. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful flywheel, Melly. Oh, my gosh. You're so cool. And he just walks to the pallet. Yeah, he kind of has to there. Um, but I think by the time he chairs, Mercenary has full health. Yeah, it's, it's because it's Mercenary. It's over. Because it's Mercenary, they get one out. That's all they need. All they need is one out. Not even to go back through the warp. He knows. He knows. Yeah, he knows. He knows. He knows. Because it's Mercenary, he gets out. E even if he warp back and he was able to get the hit, Mercenary tanks the damage. So, yep. Yeah, wolves are indeed the winner. Very close set though. That was an extremely close set. Draw, 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 draw. 4K, 3K.
I learned a lot from those Night Watch games too. I guess Warp is definitely the way Ch on Chinatown. Wait, I, the thing is, I don't get Chinatown often in rank. I'm always getting Sacred Heart freaking Hospital. I'm sick of it. <laughs> I literally, I did Hunter rank yesterday, and I got Sacred Heart Hospital four of my nine matches. Four! That's so annoying, bro. And I didn't get ever sleeping in Chinatown a single time, which are my two best maps for Night Watch, because it's all, all, all open areas. And Moonlit too. I, I think I got Moonlit once. But it's like, all I get now is just Sacred Heart Hospital, bro. I'm so sick of it. Uh, Nerf Hospital. Anyways, enough about my Hunter rank rants. Um, GG's to Wolves, they played it super well. And GG's to IS2, they, they played so well. That was actually an incredible set. And that's gonna be the end of the video for today, everybody. We still do have the Female Dancer video coming out later today. I still have to film that one though. Um, but yeah, really a big fan of that set. That was a super fun set to watch, especially the wheel game. That was definitely a really fun game to watch. Uh, and I feel like I learned a lot from just like watching the Nightwatch games. I'm gonna have to pay a lot more attention to like just hunters in general if I wanna get better at hunter. But anyways, I'll see you all later, everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.